Welcome to the Heroes How-To video series. This video will show HUD and responsible entity users how to work with partners to complete an environmental review in Heroes. There are four basic user roles in Heroes, responsible entity, HUD, partner, and state agency. Each user role has its own distinct privileges that may be assigned to a user based on their roles and responsibilities. Partner users represent an organization that works with HUD and or a responsible entity to prepare environmental reviews under Part 50 or Part 58. Partner organizations may be HUD recipients, including public housing authorities and nonprofits, or consulting firms that have been contracted to assist with the environments review process. Partner users may start environments reviews in HEROES and complete much of the analysis. However, the partner user role is distinct because unlike responsible entity and HUD users, partner users may not make any determinations or findings or take any steps to finalize an environments review. Each year's user has a personalized profile with tailored user privileges based on their role in the environments review process. When we create a profile for a partner user, we associate them with a partner organization. That partner organization is, in turn, associated with one or more responsible entities and or HUD. Both partner users and partner organizations may be associated with just one organization or with many organizations. This graphic shows one possible arrangement of relationships. Our partner user, Jane Doe, works for Enviro Professionals, Inc. Enviro Professionals is associated with two different responsible entities, Fairfax County and the City of Alexandria, as well as HUD. It has these relationships because all three organizations have hired Enviro Professionals to assist with their environments reviews, and a HEROES Administrator has associated environmental professionals with all three. These relationships allow Jane to start a Part 58 environmental review for Fairfax or Alexandria, or to start a Part 50 review for HUD if she also has the proper privileges assigned to her. The process of sharing an environmental review could be simple or complex, but here's an example of how complicated this could be in a project with a lot of parties involved. In this example, a recipient, maybe a public housing authority or a nonprofit, starts the environmental review in HEROES and enters the initial project information. They may then assign it to another partner user, in this case a consultant who is hired to do the environmental analysis. The consultant could make an initial recommendation regarding the level of review, complete the related laws and authority screens as far as a partner user can, and upload all available maps and documents. At that point, the partner could assign the review back to the recipient organization for their review or directly to the responsible entity to complete the review. Once the responsible entity user has the review, they will review the partner's work, finalize all requirements, make all findings and determinations, and, as necessary, complete Parts 1 and 2 of Form 701515, the request for release of funds and certification. They could then assign the review back to the recipient partner to complete Part 3 of the request for release of funds and certification electronically. Finally, the review would be assigned to HUD to complete the 701516, the authority to use grant funds. At any point, the assigned user can assign the review back to a previous assigned user as needed. The system is flexible to accommodate your requirements and procedures. When you, as HUD or Responsible Entity User, are assigned a review that was initiated by a partner user, you must carefully evaluate the entire environmental review record and correct or finalize any missing information. In many areas, partner users may enter placeholders or recommendations, and it's your responsibility to confirm or reject these entries. For example, starting on screen 1105, initial screen, some programs have issued guidance that recommends that consultant users enter zero as the estimated total project cost and HUD funded amount. As the responsible entity or HUD preparer, you will have to follow up and enter the actual estimates for project costs. Another example is the level of review. Partner users do not have the authority to determine a proposed project's level of review. However, HEROES allows them to make an advisory recommendation to the responsible entity or HUD by selecting a level of review on this screen. Make sure you review and confirm their selection. Next, your partner completes the analysis for the related environmental laws and authorities. This can be a little tricky for partner users as compared to HUD or responsible entity users, so let's look at the floodplain management screen as an example. We'll start by looking at the screen from the partner's point of view. The partner will respond to each question as completely and accurately as possible to determine whether the project complies or can, with mitigation, comply with that law or authority. However, as a partner, they will not be able to complete the full analysis for all laws and authorities. 
For example, partners should not begin Section 106 consultation under the National Historic Preservation Act, Section 7 consultation under the Endangered Species Act, or the eight-step process under Part 55. Similarly, they may suggest mitigation measures or project improvements, but the final decision will be HUDs for Part 50 reviews or the responsible entities for Part 58 reviews. As the responsible party, you must review and evaluate all of their responses and documentation and complete all compliance steps as needed. Heroes requires users to respond to all system-generated questions on each screen before they are able to upload documents. Therefore, where partners have documents to upload, but they are not legally able to comply with all requirements, HUD suggests that they respond to all questions using their best guesses and suggestions. For example, if an eight-step process is required, the partner will be prompted to describe all mitigation measures. However, these will not be defined until after you have completed the eight-step process. Look for recommendations from the partner user here, and when you're ready, revise this section to include the final mitigation measures. When the partner has completed all required questions, they'll be directed to the screen summary to summarize compliance. A compliance determination will be automatically generated, but partners should use this space to leave any notes, comments, or suggestions. Their comments should be clear about which responses are final and which are only advisory. Next, the partner should upload all supporting documentation that you will need to complete the screen. The final question on each Lawn Authority screen asks whether formal compliance steps or mitigation is required. To partner users, this question is grayed out and they cannot enter a response. This ensures someone who is legally responsible for the review, again HUD for Part 50 reviews or the responsible entity for Part 58 reviews, clicks through each screen to evaluate their partner's entries, make edits as necessary, and complete each screen by responding to this question. Next, let's look at the same screen from your perspective. Review their responses to each question, along with any supporting documentation, and confirm that you agree with your partner's responses. When you reach a question or prompt where the partner has entered a placeholder, make sure to update the entry. For example, in this response about mitigation, replace the partner's recommendation with the mitigation measures that you defined as part of the eight-step process. When you get to the compliance determination, review the partner's notes and update them with your own. Be sure to make it clear which comments were left by the partner and which are yours. It's important that you review the partner's notes on the compliance determination before making any changes to this screen. If you change any responses to the questions above, their notes here may be lost. This is where you will find the supporting documentation provided by your partner. In some cases, you will need to add additional documents here as well, for example, a completed eight-step process. Finally, be sure to make a final determination as to whether formal compliance steps or mitigation is required. When all of your partner's analysis is complete, they will be directed to screen 6205, prepare a notification screen, where they will be prompted to generate a preview of the environmental review record and assign the review to the next user. As HUD or a responsible entity user, you do not have access to this screen. Only after the review is assigned to you will you be able to begin editing. Once the review is assigned to you, you're responsible for independently evaluating all documents and information provided by the partner and finalizing the review. Remember that it's the responsible entity for Part 58 or HUD for Part 50 that is legally responsible for the contents and quality of the environmental review. So review the full environmental review record, including each screen and heroes, confirm that all required fields are complete to your satisfaction, and make all findings and determinations. Finally, complete the review by obtaining all required certifications and, for Part 58 reviews, completing Form 701515, the Request for Lease of Funds and Certification, and awaiting Form 701516, the Authority to Use Grant Funds, from HUD. Thank you for watching this Heroes How-To video. For more information on using Heroes, go to the Heroes page on the HUD Exchange.